the situation quickly became out of hand on Grand Cayman Island. Not a single invasive iguana was seen in the year 2000. It wasn't until 2018 that even a small number of cunning lizards appeared. Their figures skyrocketed to an astounding 1.8 million. Minimal distribution. There was no massive plot. Mother Nature alone with a large human blind spot. Mass culling operations had to be initiated by the authorities. Also, this isn't an isolated incident. The situation is identical in Florida. After a small number of iguanas disappeared unrecognized, scientists now believe thousands are thriving all over the state, possibly even more. Attempting to tally them now is like attempting to tally popcorn kernels at the theater's concession stand. Subtle, please help control the population. Flyers are no longer effective when invasive species reach these numbers. In keeping with our theme of understatement, I'm sending you a little nudge to hit that like button. Or not, I am not your boss. Now let's return to the verdant intruders. No one ever expected to see green iguanas in Florida. Those massive, gorgeous lizards native to South and Central America and a handful of Caribbean islands. But look at them now. Their rapid proliferation follows their initial discovery in the 1960s. They were essentially given free reign of the waterways in South Florida by the canal system, which transformed them into highways for iguanas traveling at high speeds. Now, in the present day, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission is essentially pleading with locals to do all they can to halt the spread. They should have taken action long ago. Well, duh. The problem is that we are now obligated to deal with the repercussions, and they are spreading like wildfire on TikTok. Iguana populations recover rapidly from culling attempts, and each female can lay as many as 70 eggs per year. The Sunshine State is also the birthplace of indestructible invasive species. By the way, the United States isn't exactly the world leader when it comes to poor reality TV and fast food. Nope. When it comes to invasive species, we also rank first in the world with 1,071 invasive species recorded as of 2016. The United States surpassed all other countries, including overseas territories, in this regard. That figure increased to more than 6,500 by 2022. Warning, it has not yet risen. What about Florida? Without a doubt, it is the capital. More exotic amphibians and reptiles call this state home than any other on the planet. A biologist went so far as to say that 26% of Florida's species aren't even native. Why? The weather is warm and humid. The number of people traveling there is endless. And the trade in exotic foods and pets is booming. Animals don't merely manage to stay alive when they flee or are abandoned by helpless owners. They flourish. You'd think it would have been simple to avoid this. Some basic logic would go a long way. But authorities failed miserably each and every time. When people see a few exotic animals at first, they make fun of them and the story makes headlines in their town. However, by the time they realize it's an invasion, it's too late. Timeless style. Invaders settle down and make themselves at home, wreaking havoc on ecosystems, homes, and even public health. On occasion, they'll do all three simultaneously. 
Species after species are wiped out as this disaster cycle continues unabated. It was for this reason that Florida was formally designated as the Invasive Species Capital of America. Many Floridians didn't give green iguanas a second thought when they initially appeared. They won't make it through the winter, they remarked. They will merely thaw out and pass away. Great theory, I must say. Unexpected events unfolded. few insects are more detested than the cockroach. Iguanas are cold-blooded, so it's no surprise that they despise the cold. However, when temperatures fall below 45 degrees Fahrenheit, they enter a cold-induced coma, rather than actually dying. They halt moving, dangle clumsily from branches, and then fall like lizard-shaped snowballs to the ground. When the weather turns warm again, their return to action is unexpected. Avoiding frozen iguanas plummeting from trees may sound amusing at the moment, but it will have serious and lasting repercussions. Green iguanas are wreaking havoc on Florida's gardens, canals, and native animals. They ruin walkways and seawalls with their burrows, gnaw through decorative plants, and transform swimming pools into, well, reptile latrines. Homeowners aren't very happy about it. Ver Worse yet, these lizards aren't merely harmful, they also pose a health risk. Salmonella can be transmitted to humans through contaminated surfaces or water by iguanas, as it can by many other reptiles. The next thing you know, it's a bacterial nightmare in your backyard, or even your toilet, instead of a lovely iguana lounging by the pool. The irony, though, is that iguanas are busy terrorizing Floridians, while their distant cousins are the targets of attacks in other parts of the world. 200 years ago, Santiago Island in the Galapagos Islands was devoid of the land iguana, a huge, sluggish relative. Who was behind it? Invasive species, you asked for it. The delicate island ecosystem was devastated when humans introduced pigs, goats, cats, and donkeys. The last land iguana was seen there in 1835 by none other than Charles Darwin. They had vanished by 1906. The invaders didn't merely destroy the iguana's food supply or eat them. The problem went beyond a lack of habitat. However, a bright spot does exist. Santiago, Chile was once again home to 3,000 land iguanas in 2019, thanks to environmentalists. With any luck, these resilient reptiles will be able to aid in re-establishing ecological harmony on the island, hoping for the best. Unfortunately, things aren't looking up for their marine cousins, the sole iguanas that can swim. The age-old issue of invasive species continues to put them in danger. This lack of natural defenses against new predators, such as dogs and cats introduced by humans, is widely referred to as ecological naivete by scientists. What does this tell us? No matter where you go, invasive species are a gift that keeps on destroying ecosystems, whether it's the Galapagos or Florida. As a means of defense against predators such as racer snakes and lava herons, marine iguanas have mastered the art of immobility. It was a brilliant plan until the swine and feline showed up. Freezing is like holding up a huge eat me sign to these invasive predators. They didn't try to avoid death so much as they made themselves more vulnerable. Ecologists in Florida are attempting to protect everything else from iguanas in stark contrast to their fervent efforts to rescue iguanas in the Galapagos.
These days, it's recommended that people employ exterminators just to keep the invasion of green iguanas from getting out of hand. Many strategies have been proposed by experts. If you want to drive them away, you can do things like change the landscaping to look less inviting, remove their favorite plants, seal off their burrows, or even just hang shiny objects or wind chimes. If that doesn't work, you can always use a garden hose. In Florida, however, green iguanas are not protected by law, aside from the most fundamental animal cruelty statutes. So feel free to go nuclear if you so desire, which means you can kill them on your property in a humane manner. Get ready. You don't need a hunting license. If it's not your property, you simply need the owner's consent. The fact that iguanas don't seem too dangerous, in comparison to, example, feral boars, may explain why some hunters feel uncomfortable killing them. But now, depending on how you look at it, killing iguanas might be considered beneficial to Florida's ecosystem. Nowadays, it's even against the law to keep iguanas as pets. They will be considered an endangered species as of April the 20 to 21. Prior to the cutoff, pet owners were only required to microchip their animals. Euthanasia was not required. Your lizard is officially a state resident at this point. Iguanas were even named one of the three most terrifying invasive species by NBC6 South Florida. Burmese pythons are twanned on the list. Peacocks round out the list. Hold on, what? Despite popular belief, peacocks actually don't originate in Florida. They first arrived from Africa, Asia, and Sri Lanka. They were believed to be charming for many years. Feathered nobility strolled freely through neighborhoods, shielded by local laws. At first, it didn't matter much. Watching a couple of birds frolic was entertaining. However, after several decades, you can find hundreds of them in some areas. Loud, aggressive, poop-splattering chaos better describes it than magical wildlife encounter. Peacocks are very protective of their nests. Assaulting humans is one of their tactics. Like cats with megaphones, they screech. What about their excrement? Dangerous surfaces ripe for catastrophe. Plus, they enjoy scratching and scrubbing automobiles while waging war on that other peacock, which is their reflection in the window or door. At long last, the authorities reached a consensus. Action was required. Capturing and relocating them seemed like the most logical next step. But where exactly should we move them? They were unpopular with zoos. Releasing them into nature was a complete waste of time. Complete so, peacock vasectomies are the backup plan. Indeed, that is correct. A professional veterinarian now performs vasectomies on male peacocks. Just neuter them like you would a dog or cat. It turns out that neutering would alter their behavior by reducing testosterone levels, which would make them too docile to defend their territory or attract mates. But a vasectomy removes the babies while keeping all the manly strutting. It would be far more efficient to use one sterile male to prevent breeding with up to 10 females than to try to capture and sterilize each hen separately. Can it be a success? This is essentially unprecedented in human history, so the truth is that nobody knows. However, a new approach is needed in Florida due to the proliferation of invasive species such as peacocks and pythons. For obvious reasons, the previous approaches weren't particularly fruitful. I understand you must be a caring audience member who is eager to learn new things if you have come this far. Please remember to hit the subscribe and like buttons down below this video if you enjoy my content. 
you'll receive more engaging videos from me if you click it. And it's free. I will see you again.